Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube. I'm still thawing out from the winter storm that hit the Texas area. If you're in the south of the United States, hopefully you're thawing out as well. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the great stuff that's coming out from both Patrick and myself. With that, let's dig into the roundup. First up is a blog post from Mike Carlo over at Power BI Tips and he's got an item that he's contributing to the community called Power BI Layouts. And what this is, is really just a collection of Power BI template files in specific layouts that you can grab and reuse for reports that you may like the look of. He indicated that they're gonna to continue to contribute new layouts as they move forward. You can check out all the existing layouts from the link down below. James Dales has a new custom visual and he's got a YouTube video where he walks through how to use the icon map custom visual. What he uses to demonstrate this custom visual is a bunch of data points from British Airways. So you can see all the flight durations as they're going across the world. Honestly, when I looked at it, first off, it's very cool. Secondly, I immediately thought of a scene from my favorite movie, War Games. I'm sure that's not the intention that James Dales had, although that would be a really cool BI Power Hour item of recreating the thermonuclear war strikes that happened in war games using this custom visual. Be sure to check out this video to see the cool work that James has done. He also indicated that the custom visual is in process right now to get to the office store. So if you don't see it yet, keep checking. It will be there soon. How about a nice game of chess? Greg Deckler has a community blog post where he looks at mean time between failure and Power BI. Mean time between failure can come up in a lot of different scenarios, whether it's regards to equipment or plants or things of that nature. And he looks at how you can actually create this inside of a Power BI report. This does involve some DAX, so get ready for that, but he's got some examples of some calculated columns and some measures that you can use to get this up and running. He also includes some sample data that he put together and shows you the report that he built off of this data. If this is something that you're interested in, be sure to check out this blog post. Links for this blog post along with other bonus items can be found down in the description below. Next up is a blog post on the Power BI blog talking about balanced scorecards inside of Power BI. This blog post references a book created by Robert Kaplan and David Norton called The Balanced Scorecard and really talks about just being able to create dashboards that are usable and functional. The blog post also mentions custom visuals created by Microsoft called the Power BI KPI Visual and the Power BI KPI Matrix Visual. This blog post does a great job of talking about more of the theoretical concept of dashboards and how to create dashboards that are compelling and easy to work with. So be sure to check out this blog post to really learn and gain insights on how to create better dashboards. We got the January developer update for Power BI, and this update had some really cool things inside of it. One of the biggest things that I think is really cool, when, especially when you see it, is the ability to embed single visuals from a given report, along with combining that with custom layouts. So this really gives you the power of, regardless of how the report's actually created inside of Power BI itself, when you go to embed that report, you can make it look however you want and order those visuals however you want. And you can switch in your application from either like a standard page view to a given, maybe a mobile view inside of your application. There were also items in there from an application lifecycle perspective, including the ability to update a report, and row level security for both tiles and dashboards. And another addition in this blog post that's really helpful from a DevOps perspective is the Azure Resource Manager APIs for the Power BI embedded items that are hosted in Azure. So if you create a Power BI embedded capacity inside of Azure, you can then use the ARM APIs to either scale it up, scale it down, pause it, do anything that you need to from a management perspective. So be sure to check out the blog post, links down below. All right, what was your favorite item? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. For me, it had to be the Icon Map Custom Visual. I think that is really cool. Really good job, James, on putting that together. But I wanna know your thoughts. Go ahead and leave that down below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and I'll see you in the next video.